It's Jason Abraham, the shadow teacher, and every time I'm about to step into a new identity, open a new chapter in life, show up in the world in a brand new way, I like to go on a vision quest. Now, vision quest, rites of passage, have pretty much been erased from the Western world. And this is a great crime, as a vision quest is a wonderful way to shake the system up, shake up the convenient, lazy thought patterns that we've been used to thinking that we've learned to survive on that may not be serving us for where we're going. And this also accesses the wisdom of higher source, higher realms. Now, the ideal way to engage in a vision quest, the way it was done in traditions, was there would be an elder, a wise mentor in the tribe that would be taking the initiate through that rite of passage and holding a space for them. But since I don't have that luxury of having one of my mentors with me, I do my due diligence as a sovereign being and I get in a situation that's a little scary, potentially a little dangerous, but one, ultimately, I know I can find my way back to a safe place. I know that the danger is not so great that my root chakra is going to be caught up in this ongoing struggle for survival. It's going to be so caught up in fear that I will not be able to access the higher realms. So that is one of the conditions that I have to set so this ritual actually works for me. Uh, so again, this is my safe space. This is my cabin. You see this is all be sleeping up in the loft and I am going to be subsisting off of these delicious peanut butter and honey sandwiches while I'm here. And it's simple, it's quaint, but it is safe. So I can return here and I know that I will be safe. I will be, I will have the care that I need and that my root chakra, again, is not gonna be caught up in the stories of fear and survival. So my quest usually takes shape on, on a strenuous hike, something that's gonna challenge me physically, something that's unfamiliar, that makes me a little scared, that challenges my resolve, that again, because it's unfamiliar, I don't know how far it's gonna go, and the desire to wanna to turn back and quit is gonna be a real uh, circumstance that I'm going to have to face. And again, just this psychological induction is what is going to open up the space of, of working through some discomfort and some fear and open the potential for higher beings. Now, this time, my quest is, I, I'm in the Pisgah National Forest in North Carolina, and my vision quest showed up on my first day. I arrived here around four o'clock, and I started my hike up the mountain. There's a gravel road that goes all the way to the top of the mountain that I've never been on. And it could be a short road. If it's a short road that ends pretty quickly, that wouldn't be much of a vision quest and I'd have to find something else. But this one, it ended up being a road that I felt like I was gonna be on for eternity. So I'm losing sunlight and I'm determined to go and see what's at the end of this road. I keep going and I come to a trail where, where the gravel ends and it keeps going and I said, you know, I've got to find my way up this mountain. I just need to see what's out there and see what's on the other side. So this becomes my vision quest to make my way through the woods to the top of the mountain and get there before nightfall. As when nightfall comes, if I get stuck, even though the gravel road is pretty steady and takes me back to the campsite, if I'm stuck on that foot trail, 
I could fall off the mountain or I may not be able to find my way back. So I make it to the top of the mountain and, and it was a strenuous physical hike. I wanted to quit many times. I was thinking, you know, it's getting too dark. I need to head back. I need to head back. But I kept going. That resolve kept me going. And as I was going back, I, I uh, again, once I, let, let me backtrack. When I got to the top, it is dusk. The sun is going down. And, and I, don't, I don't celebrate too long. I say, I need to get back at least to that gravel road. I need to get down this part of the mountain that was a, a switchback foot trail so that I can at least get on that gravel road because if I lose light, even though I have my phone, I don't know how much I'll be going. So I head back and I'm losing light. I still have a little bit of sunlight. Fine, thankfully get down back to the gravel road. Now as I continue on the gravel road, it is longer than I remember on the way back. And eventually I lose all light. I'm out in the forest. I lose sunlight. I have no moonlight. I have no starlight. It is pitch black. The world is pitch black. And what I witness is something that I've read about in the legends of rites of passage of, of that initiate going out into the woods, into the darkness. I see the world transform before my eyes. As the world fades into darkness, an unfamiliar world, a path that I've never seen unfolds before me. And I lose the sense of sight. I'm surrounded by blackness, by darkness. And there are sounds, the sounds of the night, the sounds of the spirits of the night, the creatures of the night around me that are unfamiliar. And I feel fear arise in my heart. Now, as this fear arise, arises, the temptation is to panic, is to take off and get down that gravel road as quickly as I can back to the light. But if I do that, I risk slipping falling and aggravating my already torn ACL in my right knee. And if the case is I fall and I slip and I dislocate my knee, then I might be at the mercy of a kind family of bears who would hopefully watch after me till the light came, or I might be food for the coyotes. So it's in my best interest to take some deep breaths and go to source. Now, I do have my phone, but my battery is low. And if I choose to access the light on my phone, it could give out before I reach the end of the trail. And I don't know how much farther I'm going to go. So I choose to keep my phone off. And again, that real fear is setting in. And just this unfamiliar world is around me. And I don't know if I'm going to get back or if I'm just going to have to lay down there on the road until I get some light. And what I find myself having to do is breathe, feel the earth beneath me consciously, mindfully, take one step at a time, reach into my heart, pray, ask for guidance of a bigger spirit to guide me on my path. And I'm walking very slowly, one step at a time listening to the spirits of the night, feeling the mysteries of the world around me. Eventually, I find a light. I see a light, and I'm hoping that it's the right road. But even though this is the only road to come up, the fear was so strong in me, and it was so unfamiliar, I start to second-guess myself. I wonder, did I go down the wrong path? Had I made a wrong turn? And am I going to have to be here alone in the dark at the mercy of the night until dawn comes, if it comes for me? But thankfully, 
I see the light, and it's the campsite that I was at. But again, the experience was so disorienting, the sense of fear was so great, the need to draw on source, to draw on something bigger than my ego to get me through this unfamiliar, frightening situation was so great, so jarring, that something awakened in me. I go back and I have this new appreciation for life and this new connection of the reality of being a sovereign being, co-creating with the one creator, something bigger than me, a new appreciation for nature for the miracle of the natural world, for the miracle of the sun, the stars, the moon, to provide us light, to light our way. And I come back with a renewed sense of purpose to share my experience, my creativity with you. For those of you who connect with my spirit on your own path. So, if you ever do a vision quest, again, hopefully some of the principles I illustrated will guide you. Always make sure your root chakra is taken care of, that there's just enough safety that it's not so unfamiliar that you're caught forever in the state of fear and panic, but there's just enough danger to wake you up, to rattle you from complacency, from lazy thinking, and open up the gates of spirit to guide you. I offer you this. Peace.